you have to know Earl. He came busting into our office and said, "You know, I've got to have a, a silo for my for my cabin up in Woodland. You got you got to you guys have to drop everything right now and uh, run up to Woodland with me. I, I want to show you this site, and and uh, that's what we're going to do. What he calls Monte Silo." wanted it and it, uh, I think it, it fits in perfectly here in this sort of pastoral setting. This is why it was sited as it was. I mean really just to, to look down onto the river um, and to look out all throughout the mountains and you know our ideal for the mountains it seems to be still that Swiss chalet look you know and sort of rugged and rustic and things like that. So this t to me, you know, is, is just going the, the opposite way, although you see these silos in any sort of farming setting. This one's a Scafco silo. You buy them probably, I think, for about four or five thousand dollars, you know, and it comes, in a, it comes in a box and all of these sections um, of all of the, the rings around the silo are in the in this box and the and the rings are actually different gauges so you build the very first the very topmost ring and it's the lightest gauge uh, steel and then you build the roof on top of that and then you have these come alongs these kind of jacks all around and you jack it up and then you build you bolt this next highest ring around it and keep keep doing that so you you tall the silo and you build the you know the bottom most ring which is the heaviest gauge because it's taking most of the you know most of the load at the bottom and then uh, you know you have your foundation done previously obviously and then you just bolt that to the foundation if you think about it a cylindrical shape is really a very strong structural shape and also a round floor plan will actually enclose more square footage per lineal foot of wall. From the outside, you'd never imagine how much space you, you find inside this silo. It's difficult to use windows, use openings in this form that has great structural integrity, you know, this cylinder, and then you start cutting out, you know, you start cutting out pieces of it and you become a little bit nervous about how much you're cutting out. Although that's another good reason for putting in the, the framed wall in behind it. And so that's all bolted. As you can see, there's, you know, there's a million bolts in these, uh, these off-the-shelf grain silos. They're just bolted together everywhere. And, and then we bolt this to the framed wall. And that allows us then, we do that first and then we cut, then we cut it out, cut the, uh, the, the metal out and then Fasted in the windows after that, so that it's still holding its integrity. And you, you know, you obviously can't cut too much, or else you'll you'll lose it. It'll all just mwah. Every aspect of this house can be manipulated through Earl's laptop. You know, he can close the shades. He can turn the heat up, he monitors the heat and things like that. If he's away, he can open uh, hatches and windows and things like that, all from his laptop. So that's, in that sense, it's a smart house. It tends to produce some difficulties, really, when you're in, in a plan type of a situation. You know, the stairway isn't that difficult, but kitchens in a round, you know, trying to make round cabinets and things like that are difficult. But it's not even that much more difficult because you just facet the facet the drawer so that they'll come out and, and won't, you know, just spread them apart a little bit further so they're not going to bang into each other when you pull them out. I mean, it does present challenges, sure, and but I, we like challenges. When the bank decided that they ne we needed to have a second bathroom uh, in order for the financing to work, uh, as you can see, it's very tight, but it all it all works fine. Well, the same thing was difficult. Making a sheetrock ceiling like that in this shape uh, was very difficult. Ideally, we would have used some some wood or or some metal. So the, yeah, the ceiling is a, is, a, is a difficult situation that we got to work out for these silos. I mean, you have to have an egress window, so that was, a, was pretty difficult. Then that was a last minute de idea too, because this was never intended to be a, b a bedroom. And then you come through here, and you come through his little closet area, and you know these hatches on a silo, you can actually just pull the hatch up, 
and you can you can actually look out and see uh, see who's coming maybe <laughs> or just pretend that uh, he's expecting somebody I'm not sure exactly but he does use this to um, uh, use a telescope out here and look at the night sky for the guest bedrooms we developed Earl's concept of a bed in a box with this tiny little uh, space where you climb in the bed. It's a great use of space. You got your own little window there. You don't really need an egress window because it's not a full-on bedroom. There's plenty of egress out this way. I mean, it just, it makes sense because, you know, if you you go to bed and you're just gonna sleep. So why do you need a ton of space? He really made them for his grandchildren who don't exist yet. <laughs> But he has two daughters, so he's, ex he's uh, expecting some grandchildren. Earl Silo won the People's Choice Award from, for the AIA Utah, so it, it won that award last year. And then we're, we're now, we've now just entered it in the uh, Western Region AIA uh, Awards program, so we're hoping to win an award for that too.